Welcome to this week's Dirt Shed Show, where we're going to talk about the most pointless mountain bike tech ever, and then we're shocked and one of them turns out to be anything but pointless. Uh, also coming up, we've got some gems for you. We've got the regulars and we've got sickest thing of the week. Plus, we've been frothing over all of this sort of stuff. Uh, first up, Guga Ort is railing his bowhead. Plus, Jambian Agdorch have been at District Rise, so we check out what they've been up to. And Nikolai Rogatkin's POV from that event. Insane. Right, we're talking uh, pointless mountain bike tech, and Doddy, I mean, you get all the press releases every week, you must see loads of this stuff. There's a lot of good stuff that comes out, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this has come from Martin, trawling Kickstarter, like he always does. He's found this thing called a Dead Nought tool, created by Derek Corbett. It's this kind of, is it uh, 3D printed? I'm not sure what it is, but basically this thing goes on top of your bars, and it's got laser guides, so you line them up on your fork crown, and you can get your bars absolutely straight. So I shot something the other week about how to do this. Basically, I always do it from the back of my handlebars. Yeah. You need a short stem, like a 50, 60 mil stem, so you can line up the back of bars, the crown of your fork. But this is taking it to the next level, and Martin thinks this is pointless tech. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know, I'm kind of 50-50 on this. Like, I looked at it and I thought, actually, that's genius, because no one's ever done anything like it to well, accurately set it up. For $139, you can have one. It's on Kickstarter. Yeah, but I, I spotted a flaw with it. On. Yeah, because it's working on that fork brace at the front, isn't it? What happens if you've got a pair of Manitou's and braces at the back? Uh, yeah, you stick it on the... I know what you do, you undo these stems, stick it on the put right, fork on right backwards. Around, and then line it up, and then take it off, and then put it back the other way. I mean, there's a lot of people who ride the forks backwards. So. There are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For them. I don't know, is, is it overkill? I feel like it probably is, it's especially for $139, but there you go. I could see it being good for some bike shops. Not really going to be a home user thing, isn't it? You can't yeah. just get it roughly where. That's true. That's all right. So I've been uh, playing with a drone recently. Now this is something that I kind of we use drones a bit for shoots, and they're kind of you know sometimes think they're a bit overkill, but actually maybe not version on pointless. But for actually riding your bike and filming it, uh, this blew me away. How you can use these new? Uh, I've got a DJI Mini Three, and it basically you can draw around yourself and ride off, and the drone will follow you. I know it's not for everyone, but for filming stuff, I was blown away by how good this thing is. So that's one that I thought was maybe all right, but I'm blown away by how good it is. Yeah, do you know what? I, I, I do agree with you on those, but it was definitely a craze where every man and his dog had one. And this kind of sort of yeah. died off a bit, and I think the tech's got better again now. Yeah. So one you've got looks really good. Especially, like, they're getting cheaper all the time, and yeah. that is such a small thing that, you know, anyone can pack that in their bag and take it. And it's one of the super lightweight ones, so you don't need any of those licenses to fly it properly, so I can see them becoming super popular. Anyway, uh, what's your top three most useless tech for a mountain biking from over the years? Neil, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> There's loads of good stuff. Now, the first one has got to be uh, single-piece wheels. Like, yeah. no particular brand, there's loads of brands that have done them like, you know, with like a tri-spoke style wheel. They're always super expensive so, as well. Yeah, why are you reinventing the wheel? Spokes work great and you can replace them. Yeah. Don't get it. Yeah. Like, very nice, don't get me wrong, there's some real cool carbon ones out there, but I you just... see them on the race circuit, cross country. Yeah. Have you ever seen anyone riding in real life with them? No. I haven't either. No. Um, okay, next one was, I mean, thankfully it's gone now, 1.5 inch steerer tubes. Massive. They came in to give you all this strength and rigidity that you didn't need. So you say? rid of it and had tapered. Like that's a, what is that for? That is a RockShox Totem from uh, 2007 or thereabouts. And it was kind of head, head of the curve, 40 mil stanchions, seven inch travel, coil sprung. Yeah. We're not far off with a Zeb these days except it's got a tapered steerer tube on there. And tapers just, you get rid of all the crown. You've got the stiffness well. where you need it at the bottom and nice and small at the top, so you've got a nice looking stem on there. Yeah. It's kind of settled there. Not coming so, back then. No, thankfully not. Um, but my top piece of pointless tech is one of my favorite pieces of tech, Cannondale's lefty fork. Martin's not gonna be happy about this, but. No, but I love the lefty. This isn't me slagging it off. Yeah. Um, it's just, but it is pointless. I kind of, I, I look at something like a MotoGP bike with a single swing arm, that yeah. looks cool. Why does the front look so weird? I don't know, it just looks like it shouldn't work. Yeah. Because you think the wheel looks unsupported, but it's still like how your wheel goes on the car. It's the same principle, the way it bolts on. Yeah, true. It's all good. I mean, they should in theory be half the weight, but you're cramming everything on the inside. So it's like an engineering feat to make them work. That always looks sketchy, the way you can just take the, the caliper yeah. off. Admittedly, like this one is quite old. Um, the newer ones are, I mean, they've got a single crown on the new ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's harsh saying pointless because they still work and they serve a purpose, but when you get regular forks, the regular configuration, it kind of makes you wonder why you would go to all the effort. I was actually researching for a bike I'm going to ride soon, the white PRST. Do you remember oh, that? Yeah. The old 
Uh, what they call that fork? I forget. It's like, it's a, like a, just a linkage, linkage fork. Yeah. Basically, they did that because to get rid of the stiction of the seals. And eventually, that became obsolete. That bike because forks. I think it was the Sid came out, and they said it was just it was so it, good. Yeah, it was so good that it makes the bike obsolete. But interesting. And interesting to manuf um, easy to manufacture as well. Yeah. I think the volumes they're making in these. As I say, that is an engineering masterpiece, which I think is one of Canada's USPs. They make these because they can and no one else can. Yeah, I guess Sort of so. thing. Um, but ultimately, you don't need them, do you? There's plenty of good suspension forks out there. That is true. What do you guys think? Uh, leave comments down below. What's the most pointless bit of mountain bike tech you've ever seen? Or maybe one that's new. You looked at uh, the press release and thought, that is rubbish. Sorry, Martin. Over on the GMBN store, we've got three brand new long sleeve autumn jerseys. Check them out. My favourite one is the Twilight. It's kind of quite dark with a really bright yellow GMBN jersey. Oh, Typical Neil kind it's, of colours. Yeah. Oh, I'll go with Lake Garda because it kind of feels a bit bright and sunny. Nice. Head over there, check them out, and uh, we thank you for your support. Right, over to Tom and Toff for some news and the sickest thing of the week. What's up, everybody? This week we have news from the exciting conclusion to the year's World Cup rating from Val de Sol. Yes, it was the final round this weekend, just gone, and riders were under pressure to wrap things up in what turned out to be a very tight end to the season. Starting with the junior downhill where Saracen's Jordan Williams set the fastest time of the day, and Jackson Golston suffered the same fate as Sam Hill on that drifty final corner. Jackson may have missed out on the round win, but he had enough points to take the overall for the season, with Gracie Hemstreet beating Isabel Yankova to the top spot this round as well, securing a comfortable victory on the overall too. As for the elite fields, Miriam Nicole shone on the treacherous track, beating Nina Hoffman by four seconds, with new world champ Valley Holt placing in third. Camille Balanche managed to pilot her way to fifth spot, giving her enough points to take her first overall title, just weeks after breaking a collarbone. Not the perfect season, but consistently at the sharp end of those points, which is key when there are less than 100 points separating first and third, two of the fastest women in the world breathing down your neck as well. In the men's race, Omri Piron had got himself enough of a points lead that meant he was untouchable for the overall, with Finn Isles not fit to take the start after a big crash at Worlds. Piron pushed on in the race too, but had a pretty big crash, putting him quite far down the results sheet. At the top end though, it was Loris Vergier with what can only be described as a shockingly fast run, taking the win. Andreas Kolb would finish second, and Dakota Norton with a career best of third. Honourable mention, Aaron Gwynn back at the sharp end had me on the edge of my seat, and both Henry and Bernard Kerr's runs too were incredible to watch. As for the overall standings, Vergier was enough to leapfrog him up the overall to second place, relegating Finn back to an impressive third. Cross country time now, where the women's race was a story of two races really. Pauline ferrand pivot took a comfortable win ahead of Loana Lecomte and Yolanda Neff in the XEO, but none of those riders were really in contention to win the overall, as there have been a lot of missed rounds due to injuries and such this year. So a lot of eyes were a little further back in the pack to figure out where Keller, McConnell and Terpstra would finish. The three finished with just 64 points between them. A sixth place finish in Val de Sole would be enough to secure Alessandra Keller her first overall season's win. 19th for Rebecca McConnell, enough to get her second and also best overall result, and Anne Terpstra in 45th with enough points to secure third. Slightly different story in the men's race, Tituan Caro put over 30 seconds into 10-time world champ Nino Schurter, and Jordan Saru rounded out third place. Caro's effort was enough to put him in second spot in the overall, Luca Brido, who had a super strong second half of his season, rounds out in third, but overall victory went to Nino, another one for the trophy cabinet after another successful year in the saddle. So, just enduro racing left for you to get your fix this year. We've got Crown Montana and Ludenviel coming right up. Tune into the EWS YouTube channel and we'll have more highlights and the EWS show right here on GMBM. Okay, quickly through the details of the new Santa Cruz 5010 now. Updates to the short travel offering in the lineup include a move to mixed wheels and addition of their glove box down tube storage. A nice touch as well is the little sag window, which allows you to see the right part of the shock during setup. Also, shout out to the Santa Cruz marketing team who are listing it as one of their best handling bikes ever, and then have a video where it's literally being ridden by a hand. It's cool. One last thing, if you want to find out more about this prototype SRAM mech seen on Nino Scherter's bike at Worlds, head over and give the latest GMBN Tech show a watch. Okay, that's all from me this week. Over to Toff for the sickest thing. This week I want to do a throwback to this sick trails edit from Phil Auckland and Canyon. Yeah, flippity wibbities and big hucks and sends are cool and everything, but there's something that has to be said for some actual steezy trails riding. I think Dr. Phil is one of the most stylish riders in the world, and it's just cool that he can put out a video with almost no tricks, and it's as cool as all these riders putting out videos with loads of tricks. And he's just really passionate about the UK trail scene and trail scene in general. 
And the edit was cool as well. There's a lyric in it where it says something about a dinner plate and at the same time, they just show the sick opposite one foot table. So yeah, that was my sickest thing this week. Time to go back to the shed. All right, time for some hacks and bodges. And Doddy, glad to have you here so you can critique how good or bad these things are. Starting with Sam, who's kind of bodged together like a chain uh, tensioner, I guess. Uh, he's saying, uh, riding in the Lake District, my friend's new proof mega started dropping the chain every few hundred yards. So how do you fix it? Easy, cable ties. 100%, little extra chain wrap around the, the chain ring there. It's uh, kind of like a DCD, isn't it? Like yeah, it's still one of those. So he says, it, clicking noise, there's a clicking noise your pedal, but got us over the last two hills back home. I wonder why it was just coming off so bad, though. I don't know, it, it almost looks like it's a chain guide that's missing like the roller or something. Like, yeah. It looks like an MRP style guide. Well, there you go, yeah. zip ties saved the day. Always do. A um, good one. Bit of a bodge, I'll say. Right, on to this one. So this is a oh. homemade trampoline bike. I've never done this. You ever tried it? We do no, never. Tail whips and bar spins. You got to sort of, so what you do is you pad out the fork in the back of the bike so it obviously doesn't go through trampoline. Take the wheels off, obviously, and then, uh, yeah. Get used to doing some tricks. We have got a trampoline in the back garden, but it's 50 yeah. kilogram limit. Probably not a good <laughs> idea for me. So this uh, author is unknown, but I, this person welded this themselves. So actually it made the frame themselves. That's pretty cool. That's a lot of work to go to. Hold on, so he made it with steel poles from a trampoline. What? What did you use it on then? Oh, well, it's, uh, <laughs> what? that's crazy. There you go, it's pretty cool though. Uh, and this is Jeremy, who rides Santa Cruz Mega <laughs> Tower, has got an old uh, bike work stand that's got sort of sloppy over the years. It's a GMBS sticker right there. Basically you use plumbing to sort of uh, that is smart. stop it from sagging. That's a wicked idea. A good way to keep something in circulation. I like it. I approve of that for sure. Yeah, that's a good hack, I reckon. Nice. Now, this one's cool. So, homemade tools, we see a few of these. <laughs> Laurie has made this for basically straightening up your mech hanger. Laurie says, I snapped my rear mech while out for a ride. Bad start of the week. Anyway, being a small island in the middle of the Pacific. God, where's this? Norfolk Island, where that is. There's no local bike shop, so basically made this tool. There's a flat bar bolted into the hanger with another bolt to measure the alignment against the cassette. So normally, That's... you have a long one that goes against your rim, yeah. goes all the way around, and you, may, you, you obviously see how far away it is, and then you bend it if you need to. That is a really good idea. If you could, it looks like you have to change the position of it because of um, where it is in relation to the cassette. If that could slide along oh, there, I get you, that, yeah. would, that would be genius. That's a really good idea. Have you seen these new SRAM access mechs that are kind of, they're like direct mount? Bolting on both sides. It, it almost looks like, looks like, it looks like the mech's going to be so solid on there. Yeah. What's the deal with that, with the mech hangers breaking or mech uh, Well, it's, it looks like it's still, I mean, it's hard to say without seeing it in flesh, yeah. but it looks like it still uses a UDH, which ah, is okay. designed to move and bend and break and stuff. It's a prototype so, stuff, look forward to seeing that. Yeah. yeah. There you go, what's the best Doddy, be a judge. The winner gets a GMBN jersey in the post. Look at this one, one of the new ones Do you know what, well. all pretty solid entries this week, but yeah. I've got to say, that mech hanger one, I think that's a really cool idea. That could be developed into a product, I reckon. Yeah, homemade tool. Yeah. Who was that? That was, that was Laurie. Laurie. So there you go. Jersey, nice one, Laurie. Away. Send us the details. All right, time for the caption contest. Um, we've got this picture from last week. It's <laughs> Josh Lewis, the loose dog, hanging out at Mulvins by the looks of it. So Cornish Cactus has been on, obviously. Uh, <laughs> so I may have only come third, but I did help deliver a cow mid-race. Do you know what? Smelt like it as well. <laughs> Not just Josh, everyone that went in that water. It was oh, pretty, that it was, was the water ride thing at Mulvins. I think it was more mud than water this year because of uh, how low the water was. I see. Yeah. Uh, he also says, is that Casey in the background? Would great, be great to yeah. see her and Martin out for an adaptive ride. That'd be cool, actually, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'd love to see that. Yeah, Jason True said, when the UCI said they was going to strip me of everything, they took everything but my shorts. There you go. And you and Alan, you and Alan, I guess, uh, we've all heard of Rat Boy, but nobody <laughs> guessed that entire 50 to 1 crew actually lived in the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be a winner, surely. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. I saw Josh Bryce in the mall, and I haven't seen him in years. It's good to see him ride, didn't I? I didn't even see him. Did you? Yeah, <laughs> it was cool to see the 50 to 1 crew there. Yeah, all right, then uh, we've got a stunt mug. Where are all the stunt mugs gone? Martin's Mark's smashed them all. all. Yeah, all there gone. you go. So that is coming your way, you and Alan, if you send us details. Right, this week's caption contest uh, photo is you, Doddy. <laughs> Just last week, uh, yeah. hanging out. <laughs> a little while ago. Leave us your funny captions <laughs> down below and you can win yourself a stunt mug. Right, here's some of the things we like this week. Well, uh, if you didn't know, we've got a German-speaking GmbN channel, GmbN Auf Deutsch, and they're actually hanging out at Red Bull District Ride. 
Uh, is this in Nuremberg, I think it is? That's right, yeah. So they're checking out practice, talking to the riders, and actually uh, hanging out with this guy, uh, Nikolai Rogatkin, and we've got some of his POV runners. Well, I've seen this, Doddy. Do you know what? This is bonkers. That event, I went to the first one I did, and that was a like, real eye opener for Urban Free Ride. I think that's got to be the best event. It was cool, yeah. I've, ne I've always heard of it, never actually watched it, yeah. but I watched the winning runs on YouTube, and it's amazing to see how it all works. At one point, the riders literally doing district, they get into like an elevator, go up to another building before they drop into something else. Cool event, and uh, yeah. Some pretty crazy uh, runs going down there as well. I tell you, here's one that uh, well, definitely Martin's going to like and aspire to be like. This is uh, Guga Ortiz, absolutely going flat out on his bow. He's almost drifting through some of those turns. Flat Real out, good style yeah. on there. Got to say, love this guy. And a bit of craziness uh, we've seen over on Instagram. So this is shibby time. On a one wheel, have you seen these one wheel things? <sighs> Martin doesn't stop talking about them. So they, these are quite big in America. We really don't see many of these in the UK. There but, is a guy um, around here who rides one home from work. But in Bentonville, there's people riding the trails in these, like quite a few. Quite surprising. Hmm. Maybe we should get some and have a play on them. I mean, I wouldn't Hasn't fancy... Hasn't Hank got a couple of those? Has he? I feel like Hank's got a couple at his place. Two one wheels in that mm. bike. Yeah. Uh, that, I would not hit, want to hit that jump <laughs> on it, though. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Bit of skill and bottle for that. Coming up on the channel this week, well, tomorrow, uh, Blake has been hanging out and riding with Harry Beast. Have you heard of Harry? To follow him oh, on yeah. Instagram? Unbelievable rider. 12 years old, uh, does all sorts of crazy stuff on mountain bikes and motocross bikes. He flips a motocross bike, and the stuff huh. he does on mountain bikes is unreal as well. Wow. 12 years old, and Blake, uh, let's try to see if we can hang with him tomorrow. That'd be good to watch, actually, into yeah. that. Got a pretty cool video coming up on Sunday on Tech Channel with loads of old retro stuff, including a high pivot down a bike that's from 2005, but you'd think it was launched yesterday. Yeah, the Balfour. Mad, yeah. I remember Mega Danny cool. Hart being about this tall and absolutely yeah. bombing down the hill on that bike, so yeah. yeah looking very cool to that. stuff. Right, it's time for the Bike Vault to see what we've got in there this week. In the bike vault, we still don't have the bell, so we've got the honker, and we're kicking off with Stephen's Ragley Marley. Uh, Leith Hill Summer Lightning Trail. Glad. I, I love it. I think everything about it is cool, uh, except for the bike's got the pedal in the wrong position and it's shot the wrong way around, but <laughs> it looks really cool. No drop post on the hardtail, that's fine. It's, it's cool though. Yeah, arguably you don't always need one, do you? True. Nice. Yeah, it's a nice. It is a nice. Oh. Kids bike, this is Tom's <laughs> Vetus Nippy Superlight. Oh, it's awesome, isn't it? I love all these little kids bikes now. That's a cool story as well. Uh, so Tom's girl, uh, no, his niece, Sophie, has grown out of the bike, so it's donated to a three-year-old Ukrainian girl displaced by the invasion. That's a cool oh, story. Come on, that's got her in a super nice There you shot, go. Hey. Have you seen, there's a few real fancy balance bikes, obviously Specialized do that one, but Orbea do one as well, I've not seen that. Oh, they? Saw sort a of carbon Orbea balance bike at the Marvins. That's interesting. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, Michael has got a 180, 170 mil travel trail. Down Duro. Built from scratch in a garage. In your garage, uh, Michael. It's in Ontario. And he did. I built this with Crow Molly. Uh, Chrome Molly Steel, with the help of his dad, uh, check it out. 170 hey, rear, rear travel, 184. Do I, anyone, even after I mocked Blake for building that bike himself, <laughs> anyone that builds a bike themselves, I think is awesome. Yeah. Including Blake. Like, it was like, it really impressed me. I thought it was really cool. It looks slack. It looks like a fairly high DB slack. on there. Yeah. But cool, it, looks like, it? it looks like it should work on the back, four bar design. Classic linkage, driving the shock. Looks cool. Back in the day when I was a junior down here, there was a guy, oh, I forget his name, but the bike was called Mr. Big. I and remember his those. dad yeah. made, and it looked like a British, it was super heavy, but a homemade downhill bike that. There's been a few. There's a few in that era, wasn't there? The uh, Milliard bike. Uh, yeah. Do you know what I reckon it could be a homemade bikes video? That's a good idea. I like pretty it. Pretty cool. Dig into that. It. It's got to be a super nice. Yeah, it's super nice. Well, I'm back for a UK spec bike here. This is from Marcus in Epping Forest. I'm surprised you can actually go riding there and not see new people. Um, it's quite famous for new people, is unfortunately, that right? in Epping Forest. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, that looks cool. There you go. Town walls. I like the blue frame as well. We've got the pump strapped to the top tube. I like it. I'm all in on that. I think that's a really good looking bike. I don't know why, but silver chaining looks good. Because you've got like a silver cassette and a silver chaining with a black chain. I like that. Makes it look clean, doesn't it? I'm giving that yeah. super nice. Now we have got a Commissar Meta SX Rises Gavin's bike in Glenlivet in Scotland. I've been up there, it's nice. Nice Out area. Practicing for Glenlivet Enduro. Uh, coming up this weekend. 
Nice, what do you reckon? Nice or super nice? I like the colour of it, it's cool, like gun it, metal. Yeah, blending. I really like the Commissar bikes. In fact, I just built something that looks very similar to that. You're going to yeah. see on the tech channel soon. Oh, mm. nice. Here we go, Cove. You used to have a Cove, didn't you? This is the oh. hand job Panic Chase. Bright pink. I could tell you a horrendous story about the name of this bike. <laughs> I just don't think you need to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Mark's bike, a new build complete and taken from its maiden ride. It's had a bit of a modern upgrade. I guess this is an old 26 inch. Yeah. Is it? It looked quite I big. I think actually. so, yeah. I love it. I think it's an awesome looking bike. Yeah. What I'd was the code you had? Is it full suspension? I've had quite a few. I had Maybe. the Peeler downhill bike. I had yeah. the G Spot, which is a sort of five inch, four inch travel bike. I had a Hooker. I had Four Play. You know, I've had loads over the years. Uh, <laughs> do they still make bikes? That much I don't know. No. If they do, I've not heard from them for a long time. I haven't either. Anyway, super nice deal. <laughs> Oh, Whoa, Martin, Martin's responsible for putting this bike vault together this week, even though he's not here, and you can tell, but this is a, one of the ugliest bikes I've ever seen. Really? <laughs> yeah. I think it's cool. I think the headshot looks horrendous. It just I don't it makes the them. head angle look weird. Well, just the front, like the head tube looks so weird on these bikes. I know what you mean, but I do quite like those The as stem well. sort of matches the angle of the top tube as well. It's weird. Or oh, even the down tube. That's a Charles bike. Maybe that's how Martin likes them. This is Michael's Cannondale F500. Purchased this from a bloke who had it sitting in his garage for the uh, past 10 years. Should have left it there. <laughs> Completely restored it. Oh, actually. Uh, now you, it's you 12 year old son. <laughs> 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 With his 12 year old son. Oh, there we enough. go. There you go. Someone brought into mountain biking riding a uh, retro Cannondale. The only person that's lined up the tyre graphics. Yeah. Doesn't I help it though. <laughs> I guess it's not getting a super nice in. <laughs> I don't <Wow>. think so. <laughs> I like a retro bike, to be fair, but yeah, something like those old candles. Right, there you go. D uh, Dolly, thanks for joining me in the Dirt Shed Show this week. Thanks and, for having uh, me. Yeah, good to have you in the set. Anyway, don't forget to leave your comments down below. Get involved with the uploaders, sending your bike for the bike vault. Hopefully, you'll get a super nice.